This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Atearoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Atearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We are starting today with news from Aptera, which revealed the details of its launch edition solar electric vehicle on Friday this week, causing some concern among reservation holders in the process. While the online presentation didn't feature a finished production intent vehicle, only 3D models and testing videos, the company gave details of what it said would be its launch edition vehicle, a single configuration all-wheel drive solar electric vehicle with a 42 kilowatt hour battery pack giving a claimed 400 miles 643 kilometers per charge. However, there were some worrying facts from the presentation. One, Aptera will be using the North American charging standard, aka Tesla Charge inlet, but said rapid charging will not be available at launch. It also admitted that it will build 5,000 launch edition models, but needs an additional $50 million to actually reach production. As we reported in last week's show, Tesla surprised everyone last week by making some pretty significant price cuts to its range of electric cars. The reasons for those price cuts were, according to Tesla, price normalization of cost inflation, although some pundits have claimed it was due to falling demand or reluctance on the part of buyers to buy before the US federal tax credit for EVs had been ironed out. Regardless of this reason, though, Electrek reported this week that demand for new Tesla's soared after the announcement. Quoting anonymous sources, the news site says that many Tesla stores in North America set new records for sales with quote unquote unprecedented demand for new cars. The price cuts have already percolated to the used Tesla market, and for those willing to do the legwork, bargains are there to be had. A year after it debuted, an all-electric camper van based on the Ford Transit RV specialist Winnie Bago has debuted a second all-electric motorhome called the E RV Squared. Unlike last year's model, which was built on a bespoke conversion of the combustion engine Transit, this year's concept is built on Ford's all-electric E Transit, meaning the E RV Squared gets approximately 108 miles, 174 kilometers of range per charge. This is something that Winnebago notes is the reason this particular variant isn't designed for series production. When a longer range e-transit is available though, it appears Winnebago is keen to build one. The updated concept features a 48 volt, 15 kilowatt hour auxiliary pack and 900 watt photovoltaic system for off-grid camping. The ERV squared will however soon head out on a public feedback tour around the US. Around the world, there's a definite shift away from globalization towards more national interests as governments and companies seek to become more self-reliant. In the automotive industry, we're seeing that too, with some countries like the US enacting policies that reward companies for sourcing materials and components nationally rather than internationally. And this week, Ontario Tech University, working with Canada's Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association and students from the Carleton University School of Industrial design unveiled a concept car under the name Project Arrow EV that proves Canada can do the same. It's an all-electric car with 97% of its components made in Canada, including its 82.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and twin electric motors. There are currently no plans to bring this concept car to production. StoreDot, a solid-state battery specialist that's been working on extreme fast charging battery packs for many years, has been pretty busy of late. Not only did it just open up its first US facility, a testing center in California, but it also confirmed this week that a total of 15 global automotive brands are now putting production intent validation battery packs through its paces. When StoreDot first promised ultra-rapid charging technology, many in the industry, including us, were skeptical of the claims, but with StoreDot Dot XFC cells having successfully completed third party validation, and with that validation cells now in the hands of automakers in the US, Asia, and Europe, it is starting to look as if StoreDot may very well be the key to ultra rapid charging. The company says it will begin mass production of XFC cells for Series EV production next year.
It's fairly well known that, like gas cars, electric vehicles tend to have a reduced range in winter due to a whole range of different things, and we've made several videos on this channel on the topic before. One way automakers can help ensure range loss in winter is kept to a minimum is to use heat pumps rather than resistive heaters in their cars, since heat pumps use about one third of the energy of a resistive heater, saving more stored battery energy for the purpose of driving. This week, however, we learned that the Volkswagen Group has quietly stopped putting heat pumps in some MEB platform vehicles, including the ID4 and Audi Q4 e-tron, installing resistive heating systems instead. The automaker is blaming quote-unquote global supply bottlenecks, which insiders suggest is actually a semiconductor shortage. Customers in Canada, where the change was first noted, are being given the choice to wait or buy their car without a heat pump. As the average price of new cars continues to rise and automakers start to realise that leasing electric cars to customers means they can more easily recycle and reuse components, we're seeing a real push in the EV world towards leasing rather than buying. Some companies, like Tesla and Ford, no longer allow you to buy out your lease, and this week we learned that Sony Honda Mobility wants you to lease rather than buy its recently unveiled Alfila EV. Admitting that the car is going to be pretty expensive thanks to all that fancy onboard tech, the CEO and chairman of Sony Honda Mobility told reporters recently that the company wants customers to lease its vehicles for 10 years or more, utilising over-the-air software updates to keep customers' cars up to date. While leasing may be appealing to companies, though, many consumers prefer to buy outright. Three-wheeled specialist Akimoto, based not so far away from this studio in Oregon, USA, may have broken the mould with its Akimoto FUV and Roadster, but now it appears to be fighting for its very survival. The company, which removed the company's former CEO and founder Mark Fronmeyer after he was arrested for DUI in August last year, has just idled its production facility, issuing a regulatory filing with the SEC that said it requires quote-unquote substantial additional funding to resume production, warning investors that it may be required to cease operations completely and or seek bankruptcy protection, the company's value has plunged to less than $7 million, with stock trading for a few bucks each. Honestly, things don't look very good for it right now. Tesla's share price experienced an upward trend this week, driven in part by Tesla's reported rise in customer orders and lower vehicle sticker prices. Despite that, though, Tesla, or rather Elon Musk, is very much still in the firing line with an ongoing trial over Elon Musk's now infamous going private at 420 funding secured tweet coming to the end of its first week. Elon Musk is due to testify next. At the same time, there's a story doing the rounds about the staging of a 2016 demonstration of Model X autonomously driving, something the car wasn't capable of without prior preparation at the time, and harsh criticism from Ross Gerber of Gerber Kawasaki EFT. Talking at the company's shareholder meeting, Gerber said that Musk quote-unquote broke the stock when he sold a large volume of Tesla stock to buy Twitter. He is pushing for Tesla to rein in Elon Musk's behaviour. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that is right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and make sure that you start your own clean green EV journey today. We all know that the secret to seeing large volumes of electric vehicles rolling off the production line is ensuring that the economies of scale that can come into play to make them affordable actually happen. That in turn means making sure that automakers have in-house battery supply chains where possible, which is why most automakers are now pairing up with battery specialists. Not so long ago, Ford announced a new partnership with Cattle that would see the two build a battery production facility in the US. But Commonwealth of Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin has said no to offering any subsidies for said project, effectively making it not likely to happen. His reasoning, at least publicly, is that Cattle is a Chinese company and he says he doesn't want Chinese-owned companies receiving money from his state or even operating in the state. But given his cabinet involves former fossil fuel lobbyist Andrew Wheeler, the very same guy who used to run the EPA under President Trump, well, yes. 
And finally, while it's easy to think about electric cars as being a primary electrification path in much of the world, the reality is that in many places electric bicycles and electric motorcycles are more practical, especially in markets where two-wheelers are more culturally acceptable. Which is why, in parts of Africa, for example, we're seeing a surge in electric motorcycle use as companies like Rome bring affordable models to market. But in Kenya's capital of Nairobi, we're seeing another motorcycle brand join Rome on the road, EcoBoba. It's in the early stages of testing an all-electric motorcycle taxi service that uses battery swap stations to give riders a quick and easy way to recharge. Kenya's power grid is powered by 95% renewable energy, so it really is a no-brainer to make that switch. And with battery swaps costing less than one half the cost of a full tank of petrol, test riders already have fantastic things to say about the service. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit that notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched, it is now time to switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help wheel the nation off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more awesome content, as will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. If you haven't seen his recent video of the LDV MIFA 9, it's high time you did, and I'll be back here next weekend for our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.